Okay. So we'll do what we normally do. We'll go to the ladies present. Uh, oh, trust me. What ladies? Come again? Exactly. Yes. We got some. Where are, we're wearing pants. You're the one wearing a skirt. Yes, That's true. right. Okay. Are you guys ready down there? No. Yeah. Are you guys ready down there? Okay. So thank you all five people. Uh, are there five? There are five. We have five people today. I can't see the entire list. All the people over there. Okay. Yes. Hello, people. Um, welcome to the uh, Galbraith Pocket Radio uh, panel. Woo. Um, yeah. Woo! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Well, you guys got to know the Best panel yeah. ever! Woo! Yeah, that's all right. Um, and we're going to talk about, um, we're going to watch Time Crash. We're going to talk about it. Um, what are you doing? It was making noise. It's oh. called Paul. Oh, hold on. And what is your panel about? Dr. Who! Not a fan. Okay. So we'll start down there at the very end with the Hot Big Jesus and introduce ourselves. Uh, well, this is Hot Big Jesus. I'm Hot Big Jesus' handler, Jason Buterin, uh, creative director of Mad Ones Films and lifelong Who nerd. Um, yes, we have a film screening tonight, 10 o'clock, in uh, Boardroom 2, uh, the third act in a short film trilogy called Half Faithful Travel, sort of Twilight Zone meets Tarantino, and find a Shakespearean spaghetti western setting. So come one, come all, get the lady, take a color, talk about what we're Actually, we, we might need that back down there. Six. Six. I don't know if you need to up the camera. Uh, uh, You're being uh, too today. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, oh, oh, um, can you grab the mic? We're going to need it for down there. That sounds so dirty. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We're going to need a mic down there. Yes. What's my doing up there? Exactly. All these panels are starting to sound no, like you got, you got to do it like this. So we have to talk like Lemmy from Motorhead. Yeah. That's going to end. Shut up, Angela, you and your watch. Okay, okay. 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 you're using this for right now. Oh, yeah, turn it around. I like her. Okay, Allegra, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Allegra, chainmail chick. This is Pikachu. I'm on this panel because Davies forced me to. So. And her favorite episode is Blink. Good answer. My least favorite episode ever is Blink because he makes me watch it over and over and over again. It terrifies me. It's brilliant and it terrifies me. So. Good answer. Allegra. <laughs> oh. <laughs> for the audience. Andrew, uh. I'm Angela Pritchett. Hi, Mr. Mike. Um, I'm a costumer and a makeup artist. I actually did makeup on the film that's screening tonight, Hopping Jesus. Go see it. And yeah, and I have three films in the film festival tomorrow, so come see those two. She has and one. earrings. Everyone. Yeah, I have little TARDIS earrings in and a TARDIS shirt on. And notice the shirt. Sadly, Derpy TARDIS isn't with us this weekend. <laughs> but she, she made so much room in the car. No Derpy so, TARDIS. Yeah, no Derpy TARDIS. Oh. Here you go, Rich. Introduce yourself. I, like I need the microphone. <coughs> Hello, my name is Podcasting's Rich Siegfried. I am uh, known throughout the internet as Podcasting's Rich Siegfried. Surprisingly, that's not my given name just yet. Uh, there is a petition. Uh, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I'm going to drop the microphone when I'm done. Um, picked up the radishes, but dropped the beat. All right, so uh, I'm going to be emceeing numerous uh, sundry things throughout the weekend as I am the con MC, and, and I do lots of other stuff. Yeah. I just Charles got here. The, Charles No. Wait, oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah, thank right. you. Thank you. It's similar. Yes, but the fact that they were gay men. We gotta move this. Yeah, that's that's a little prejudiced. I mean, dude. Uh, I'm Clayton Wick. Uh, I'm a currently failing stand-up comedian in North Carolina. I'm hoping that someday, someday, I'll actually receive money for my work. But until then, uh, I guess that I'm best known for doing Gallifrey Pirate Radio, which is watched Woo! by which 
every installment is watched by literally several people. So thank you for showing up this evening. We <laughs> you have doubled our viewing audience. Yeah. Yeah, we're actually, yeah, we're, we're starting to hit numbers. Awesome. Hi, I'm the wonderful Billy Flynn from GeekRadioDaily.com. Ding. Thank you. It's nice to have people in the audience. I'm also this radio guy. You can also find me doing voices. Uh, hey, when's that new Mr. Adventure coming out, guys? And uh, Star Trek Miami and things like that. And, uh, yeah, is he an episode? He's editing? You mean there might be a new episode? You've got three episodes you're supposed to be editing. Oh, so, and that, that's podcasting to Rich Fred passing the buck, as he does so well. Uh, join us. We've got a show that uh, some of these schlubs will be late for uh, this Sunday at noon, right in this very room. So just don't leave this room, and you'll have the time of your lives. And uh, I'm wearing a Doctor Who shirt as well, and I didn't know I was going to be here. Yes! Thank you. I can wear a shirt. Thank you. you oh, okay. I still haven't introduced myself yet. Okay, fine. Uh, no, here. Take it away. Please note that Gallifrey Pirate Radio is no longer allowed to talk about Poland or make any reference to Poland or the Polish people. And neither are you. Thank you. Okay, I am the... <laughs> I don't know that, what I am. I'm the one that brought all these people together to talk about Doctor Who. Um, I'm David Beauchamp, um, author, podcaster, anthologist, editor... Um, Kiltler, librarian. I do a lot of things. And damn sexy beast. Is anthologist a word? It is now. <laughs> He's a librarian. He's okay. Tell Shakespeare. He's a master librarian. Can you shut off the lights? Can, so we get this yeah, party but rolling. You want me to. Yes, <laughs> I want you. Yeah, I got a dog protection. To shut off the lights. Right. Yeah, we 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 should shut the door. They make it more mysterious. Ooh. So you don't have to turn the other way, Bruce? Bruce, can you shut the doors, please? <laughs> Could you shut the hole? Could you close the hole? Thank you. I know. Give me a second. He moved. You made us leave, Dave. Why you wear a hat? I don't want to seem vain. Could you keep that on? 
What have you done to my TARDIS? You've changed the desktop theme, haven't you? What's this one? Coral? It's worse than the leopard skin. Oh, and how they come, the Brady specs. You don't even need them. You just think they make you look a bit clever. That's an alert. Level five. In the case of a temporal collision. It's like two TARDISes have merged, but there's definitely only one TARDIS present. It's like two time zones at war in the heart of the TARDIS. That's a paradox. I couldn't blow a hole in the space-time continuum the size of... Well, actually, the exact size of Belgium. That's a bit dramatic, isn't it? Belgium? Really? This? No, I'm fine. Oh, no, of course. You must have had hands free, didn't you? Like, hey, I'm the doctor. I can save the universe using a kettle and some string. And look at me, I'm wearing a vegetable. <laughs> Who are you? Take a look. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, yes. You're... Oh, no. Here it comes. Yeah, yeah, I am. A fan. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> my biggest fan. Look, it's perfectly understandable. I go zooming around space and time, saving planets, fighting monsters, and being, well, let's be honest, pretty sort of marvelous. So naturally, now and then, people notice me. Start up their little groups. That Lindelot. Are you one of them? How did you get in here? Can't have you lot knowing where I live. Listen to me, I'm you. I'm you with a new face. Check out this bone structure, Doctor, because one day you're going to be shaving it. On time, that's my cue. In this limit, we're going to decorate the black hole strong enough to swallow the entire universe! Yeah, that's my fault, actually. I was rebuilding a TARDIS, forgot to put the shields back up. Your TARDIS and my TARDIS, well, the same TARDIS, different points in his own time stream collided. There you go, end of the universe, but the fingers. But don't worry, I know exactly how this all works out. Watch. Venting the thermo buffer. Roaring the helmet regulator. Just to finish off, let's fly those cyclone crystals. You blow up the TARDIS.
Bruce. Can you get the lights again for us, please? And since we didn't announce it before we started it, yeah, we're watching Time Crash for this episode. So <laughs> y'all know. Does it bother anyone else that David Tennant is boning his own daughter on two different levels of canon? That's what I just yeah. <laughs> yeah. I now hate you, Clayton. <laughs> He's boning the master in several layers of Flash uh, sl uh, Slash Yeah, but that doesn't count because it's not like the real seats. Uh, okay. Uh, it's for real seats in my head, Clayton. He's always kind of a master boner, like, you know. Okay. So, we'll start with me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Yes, um, um, we always start with, what did we like about this episode? Maybe the microphone, you point at your face. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to be loud enough without the mic, so if you hold this. It's cool. It sounds like he's running back and forth across the room. Yeah. Hey, that's how you do it. It sounds like he's in his crotch. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that going? Aw. That doesn't sound like that. For me, I thought this episode was absolutely perfect. Because um, it featured my favorite doctor, the fifth okay. doctor. Yes. <laughs> have I not taught you anything? <laughs> you have. Yes. <laughs> You've been my doctor of who, Yoda. Yes. Oh, it's good boy, focus. I am. No, I, honestly, I absolutely thought this was an absolutely marvelous. It's my favorite children in needs, Pudsley, Pudsley uh, thing they've ever done, because um, it featured the Fifth Doctor, um, and it you know had Tennant saying how great the Fifth Doctor was. Um, the whole yeah, but you're my Doctor line. I mean, it's just like oh, that, I, mean, that, I don't care how hard your heart is. You're just like. Yeah, I mean, because I was tearing up like pretty badly. Oh, and then the whole incestuous thing comes inside. Because the fifth like, doctor is my doctor. Daughter. I mean, that's Where that's you know, my favorite of the doctors. Daughter, yeah, your daughter. Yeah, doctor. yeah. And you, yeah doctor. There's a lot of wibbly wobbly. Just wibbly wobbly. You think he makes her the head nurse and he's the doctor? Well, now the question is, does he really feel that way about Davidson, or was he just trying to score points to be able to? I think he was, try I think he was pretty, pretty much kissing ass. Well, see, no, I, I, or, or was it a little bit of He's like, please don't attack me with your vegetables. I, 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 I just want to, just a tip just for a second. Fan. Well, see, what I've heard is his favorite doctor is supposedly the fourth doctor, and Moffat's Woo! favorite doctor is the fifth doctor. And that's the reason why it's it's yeah. the fifth doctor, plus, you know, they'll never get bigger at that point to come back. Because he's just now warming up back to Doctor Who with the Big Finish stuff. Yeah, he's he's awesome. just now if you back haven't heard the new Big Finish audios with Fourth Doctor, they are awesome. So, what do the rest of you guys? I mean, what what do you like about this episode? I kind of like everything, honestly. It's just good. You get the mic. You hold the mic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Just the whole thing is. It's almost sort of a dry run, I guess, for uh, the doctor's wife, just in the sense that it's Moffat finding an excuse to spend an extended period of time talking about the things he loves about Doctor Who, rather than actually bothering to tell a story. And that's okay sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it in the best way, I do. It's just a guy who is a fan of what he's writing getting a chance to express how much of a fan of it he is. And I think that's, that's sort of worth watching in itself. Billy, I know you're loud enough. Well, when I was a kid, you know, the first time PBS showed one of the, you know, it was the Five Doctors, was the first multi-doctor one I ever saw, probably most of us, and it was just like, oh. So when they did this, it blew my mind, and, and it was an awesome tease for something that never happened, because the Titanic comes in, and if you remember the pilot for the new series, uh, you had uh, Eccleston, there was a picture of him on the Titanic, and I'm like, oh my god, they're going to do a modern two doctors, and they didn't, but... Uh, it was still, it was awesome to see that love, because that's what I love about the new show, is that it, it doesn't try to erase, it's not a reboot, it fully embraces and continues to fit in, and for that it's made the kid in me happy that everyone else finally gets it. Well, so. I'll say this, it really surprised me when I was watching this, because they hadn't leaked that it was going to be yeah. a two doctor thing at all, and I start watching it just because, you know, I know they were doing the special, and I see Peter Davison on there, and my jaw literally dropped. No, you saw the coat because you didn't see him at first. Yeah, you oh, saw yeah. the coat went, oh, my. yeah, that's all I needed. That was it. Speaking of, senses tingling. Yeah. Speaking of the two doctors, is it cool if we just call this the two doctors and pretend yes. the other one never happened? Yes, I agree with you. If okay, you guys have cool. never seen it, there was a two doctors in the classic who with uh, Colin and Troutman, and it was. That was uncomfortable. It was very bad. <laughs> 
That, that was no bueno. Clayton's not a very big fan yeah. of that. So does anybody else want to throw in why, why they really like this episode? I mean, for, uh, yeah. um, for, for me, I liked it because it, it seems like it's more of a uh, setting up. Uh, it, it was more of like a, a, a crowd tester to see if a multi-doctor would actually go over well. Because most of the stuff was, uh, some of the classic stuff that's come in, there hasn't been much that could really be tied to old school who. The only thing is the Daleks, and to a degree they kind of reset them. The Cybermen, they weren't the classic Cybermen. They were the ones from the alternate universe. Uh, with the, the yeah. the but the luckily master we just got that back. The Master was a completely different yeah. Master. Yeah, we finally got, got the, the old school ones, but yeah. they could have been from anywhere else. Yeah. Because that's the writing. And so this was really one of the first times uh, that they they really tied it in to the, uh, the continuity of Doctor Who. Because even like I said, even with the Dalek stuff, it was kind of a hard reason. No, there there is there's one episode in Eccleson where they where they tie back, and that's the one I think wasn't it called Dalek? The well, one with there's the there's one there's one there's there's the Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, well, no, they they actually they go through this museum thing and they the show the various museum, classic yeah. Who monsters in there. Like, but, but I'm just saying, there's there's that story point as opposed to just scenery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've got unit. Yeah, we got unit. I think for me, like, I mean, one thing I love about this, I mean, the fact, you know, aside from the reason it was made with some children and anything, but it's like, it's it's such a short and concise and exactly what you need instance to have that two Doctor crossover. Because it wasn't like a half hour or an hour long episode where it's like, yeah, you have that brilliance of seven minutes, and then there's about four to three minutes of just awkward, what do you yeah. want to do? Right? No, we have two Doctors now. Yeah, you, you don't have like, two Doctors like measuring your sonic screwdrivers. I mean, you don't have that weird sort of unbelievable awkward thing, but it really, it really, like what Clayton said, I mean, it was that perfect test for Moffat to just be able to show how much of a Who fan he really is without having to try and placate a bunch of other people and sort of stick stuff in that he didn't really care about. You know, it was a concise seven minute story and that's all it needed to be. I mean, he didn't yeah. try and draw it out or make it anything more than what it was, but it set him up, I think, for everything that he's been doing to, you know, for the well, last I mean, few, I, I, few years. I, I mean, if you look at it, what episodes of Who have won all the awards? <laughs> the I good mean, ones. Honestly. The really good ones. Yeah. And who are they all by? Oh, I, I believe it's uh, Kermit uh, Moffat. Yes, yeah, even Moffat. Moffat. Wait, wait, like, like, that two doctors, like, the first time I watched the, the, first, like, the three doctors, I mean, even still, I just watched about three or four months ago, that whole, that whole it just seems so uncomfortable. I mean, it's like, it doesn't seem like anybody's having fun. What, the three doctors? Yeah. I, I, the three doctors, I mean, just kind of, I and the five doctors, doctors, I mean, just good, but it's just, yeah. Well, like, in fairness, it hadn't really started to, you know, stop being creaky yet. It was trying to get there with action and yeah. distinguishing. Yeah. Because that was the 10th, 10th anniversary, if I remember correctly, 10th or 15th was the Three Doctors. Yes. 10th, 10th was Three Doctors, 25th yeah. was Five Doctors. Yeah. yeah. So imagine so what we're doing with 50th. Can yeah. we talk about Paul McGann yet? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like McGann. I know you like McGavin, McGavin, I kind of like him too. The movie is almost like some crap, but I, I personally like him. So it's the audios. They have like four seasons of audios of just events. I, I will just, I will never get past Eric Roberts as a master. Ever, ever, ever. Eric Roberts you know, as the master was amazing. You know what's funny about it? <laughs> The only thing better would have been Nicolas Cage. <laughs> no, no, okay. No, Eric Roberts as the master isn't necessarily amazing for the right reasons, uh -huh. but by the no, by the end of the third act, he is Eric Roberts as flamboyantly gay uh, Fu Manchu as, as, as the master. <laughs> Everything about it is just completely awesome. It doesn't really no. It doesn't really fit in with classic Who. It doesn't really fit in with prior interpretations of the character. But if you just take it as Eric Roberts playing a Doctor Who villain, I don't really have anything to complain about there. Well, you know, he's, he's I'm the Doctor Who villain, but not the master. <laughs> but you know what the, the funny thing about Eric Roberts playing the master was? He was the only person that was a prior Doctor Who fan that was part of that cast. And you could tell. Yeah, he was the, honestly he was the he was the only fan. He was chewing and see really like a man. He was twirling an invisible mustache the entire time. Exactly. And in all fairness to the to the misguided Fox attempt, they did do one of the wonderful um, uh, Paul McGann um, audio ones where he, he laughs it off the whole thing about faking the, the arc and yeah. stuff. He's like, oh, I made the master believe this and that I was human because blah, blah, blah. He just sort of laughed off that part so you could forget the nonsense. You know what's creepy is Paul McGann hasn't aged a day since. Like he looks exactly well, he's a time lord. Oh, that's why the lady yeah, he was saw in the Revolutionary War with the Three Musketeers. Well, you already said that. Angela, go. Yeah, okay. ladies. I like uh, this one. I like having both doctors, and I kind of like the um the follow it to the Christmas 
special. Yeah, we know the Christmas episode Most is your favorite. Most people this is one of my favorite Christmas specials. Because Leonardo DiCaprio cute. became the companion. It was awesome. No, because <laughs> Tom, He's like, Tom, Tom Leonardo's in it. He's definitely so, Dr. Boone. Yeah. Which, and yeah. just a really big Kylie Bow fan. I'm a straw, you Dr. Boone. I can't get you out of my head. Oh. <laughs> the TARDIS locomotive? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but oh, come on, she was a great companion. I had a couple good songs on the soundtrack, though. I mean, uh, there, was, there was one of the Kylie Minogue songs I actually enjoyed. And she was <laughs> like, she was. I mean, she I enjoyed her videos good. with the sound off, but I mean, that was one song she did. Was Sometimes good. I like to watch or listen to Witness Tennis, but not necessarily watch it. And there's another upside to Voyage of the Damned in that it does feature, I think, the largest amount of screen time that any of Captain Jack's one night stands have ever gotten. <laughs> <laughs> I love Z, I love Gold. And, the and finally a validation for that line. <laughs> okay. Allegra, what did you think about this episode? I um, well, besides the fact that already mentioned. Um, I just thought it was kind of like a really a really fun nod to the fan community. Like the whole, you know, everyone's into cosplaying and dressing up as the doctor. And just that, that moment where he's like, I know who you are. You're a fan. And, he, and he's like, he doesn't, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just thought that was cute. And, and everybody does have, you know, their doctor. So just adding that line in there for me was just, you know, it was like, like you got to imagine yourself actually talking to your doctor, and you're like, you know, you were my, you're my doctor. And then David Tennant sweeps you into his manly arms, and you, wait, what? Okay, it's cool. We, it's cool, Allegra. We, I think everyone up here has had that moment. Okay. So, so okay, I, I know we've done this a lot, this but um, who, who is your doctor? Who is my doctor? Who is your doctor? Because we got some new people on the panel. Okay, let's you say Richard E. Grant. <laughs> oh, good call. What about Hugh Grant? <laughs> uh, Quincy? Rowan Atkinson was quite good. No, we're, we're talking about Dr. Hugh. Gotcha. Who's your favorite doctor? Um, I'm, I'm going to switch gears. Like, for the moment, the mood I'm in right now, I'm going to go to Eccleston. Nothing wrong with that. Respectable. I enjoyed Eccleston a lot. Yeah, he's fun. Okay, well, I mean, he was just so, I mean, just dark and twisted, like if your little younger brother had to be the doctor, he was just pissed off because his ears were so big and he wanted to wear his giant Morpheus jacket, like he just wanted to do that, but then on one single episode he gets to dance, and then that, that like that made me just really, really happy. But I mean, I, I still, I, I hired all of them. Okay, Allegra? Um, well, obviously I have a, a large soft spot for David Tennant, but, um... Soft. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Wow. Are there any children in this what, area? What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> there are subtitles, right? Some <laughs> oh. are also the, some <laughs> text, <laughs> perhaps, some titles. <laughs> On the upside, the camera might not be up. That suit is also lovely. I don't know. I feel like a typical fan. I like the two new pay ones. Look, shiny. Ooh. Ooh. And look out. Um, is it favorite? What? Who's your favorite doctor? Yes. yes. Who's your doctor? Uh, probably Tenet or Smith. Who's your doctor? That's what I just said. Fangirls, fangirls. Henderson. Like, I mean, I, I grew up watching older two, and yeah, I just, I adore Tenet and Smith, but... Who would I you also, make that with first? Uh, Amy Pond. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> right <laughs> answer. <laughs> oh, come along, Pond. This has a whole meeting. <laughs> no, she just nagged her for a while, though. She's like, okay, Amy, I can't do this. To come on, Amy. Come on, the fuck. I can work too, Amy. I just did. I can work. Oh, well, you're a good woman. You don't get two. I get two. This is what Sherry. happens when ADHD Sherry. people do come from. Of your Sherry. Of your Sherry. Rich, Sherry. 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 Rich Sherry. who is your doctor? Guys, uh, uh, I Well, you know what? For a while, it was non emo tenant, because that just got old really quick. Um, but you don't understand, Tennant. But he's so brooding. <laughs> no, there's, okay, look, look, look. Just needs someone Angel to understand. Angel on yeah. was he not just brooding. Needs a he woman. was a bitch. And he was Captain Forehead. Okay? <laughs> look, Tennant was crying at the drop of a hat. And so then your doctor old. was. Yeah, and I did like at the end when he was leading up to the diet. That emo this made sense, but the rest. Emo? <laughs> at least he didn't uh, dance. Emosity? Like, yeah. Emosity. Yeah. I would say that after Smith took over, he has really grown to be my doctor because he's... Quirky, funny, dark, twisted, scary, all of that in, in just the, the most eclectic way. I think 
Uh, it's for such a young actor to play such an old character that well, he's done it better than just about anybody else so far. I was saying Sorry. about him in a previous panel that he really brings like a, a subtlety to the role. You know, yeah. Tennant is very kind of in your face. You know, he's very exuberant all the I know. time. <laughs> and and Matt Smith is like, you know, he's he has some of that, you know, that, that exuberance, but he's also very, you know, very nuanced. I think. Well, and Tennant is a little bit too good looking. He's a little bit too much towards the fan service, and. And that's true, because that's why a lot of girls... You know, like every woman in movies. comic books? Yeah, exactly. It's very sexist. Um, that a lot of women were coming <laughs> oh, so to the series because it was a good-looking guy, and they stuck around for the good writing and stuff like that. Right. But <coughs> with Matt Smith, that's true. he's a handsome fella, but he's not nearly as pretty he do it. as he David Chesky is. Looking. And so it just, he, 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 has to, he has to deliver more than Tennant has to. Tennant has the crutch about being a, a little bit better looking. Not saying that he relies on that, but that Matt Smith really has to bring it, much like Eccleston did, because Eccleston ain't pretty to look at at all. Um, and so they, they, he has to actually embody the doctor, and it can't just be a quirky performance. He has to become that character. And so by embodying it far more, I think that uh, you lose the actor and, and really see an embodiment of the doctor better than uh, I think just about anybody else has. Well, the, the, thing, the thing I love about Smith, I mean, because he would be, he would be my close second. I mean, like, I mean, he 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 seems to be able to dance both edges of the sword beautifully. Because I mean, he, he's got that almost that that, 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 that puerile childlike innocence about him. I mean, he can he be completely fascinated and overwhelmed and overjoyed by holding Stormageddon, the Dark Lord of All, who's actually the name of my baby, who I miss terribly. It's probably still at least still asleep. Um, but you can also still yeah, you got you got that childlike <laughs> a little innocence. Little Child, yeah, a little from a from a fall table. Uh, he's got the childlike innocence, but I mean, at the same time, he can flip a switch, and with one action or one line, he can plot the most, I mean, just evil, diabolical. brutal, diabolical demise Which, for you, yeah. and grin and, and grin while doing it. I mean, he's got that he's got that combination of like rock and roll bravado, childlike innocence, and just utter brutality. But with the bow tie, you don't care which one you're getting at the time. But the it's thing all, is, it, he, he pulls them off all beautifully. It's a great it, juxtaposition. It, that's exactly how a child is. Mm -hmm. Because if you take uh, most children, they have such a horrendous mean streak that you don't realize. Because that's why some kids can be very mean to a pet or to uh, uh, you know a brother or sister. Or to and other children. Exactly. Yeah. You know, whether it's making fun of us for being chubby or you know whatever. It gets better. Um, yeah, I understand <laughs> it does. It's a website that tells me that. Um, <laughs> but the thing, children have that that just that darkness about them, and you know, I've got three kids. Uh, I see a regular <laughs> thing, and uh, twin girls. So seeing both sides of evil in the stereos. Play with us, play with us. No. But but uh, Smith really embodies that that childlike, not naivete or innocence, but that darkness, and then also the playfulness. And like you said. Just turns it well, on. He, 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 could kiss, like, he, he could kiss you or kill you in the same second. I don't know which one you're going to Okay. Exactly. Clayton, who is your favorite? That's what makes him so attractive. Um, really hard to say, That's actually. Uh, sometimes it's Smith. He was actually my first doctor. Uh, sometimes it's Tennant. Sometimes it's Troughton. I just, I love all three of those guys. They're great. And really, they've just. Yes, Mo. <laughs> So Billy, like most American kids in the early 80s, my first doctor was Tom Baker. I didn't know anything about previous doctors. There was no internet. And the day that he fell down and there turned- There was no what now? There was, there was nothing. And there was three channels. The and they went off at like 11, except for 12 on weekends. I don't it's know. crazy. You gotta find the gap. And, and the day that Tom Baker turned into Peter <coughs> Davison was the most traumatic day of my childhood because I was like, what is this? So once I got past that and, and saw it, Every doctor in my mind is judged against Tom Baker because even the older stuff I saw, I saw parts of Tom Baker in them because, of course, the character evolved. Uh, so that that is, of course, and so of course, when we had the canine episode, oh my heart, oh my god. Um, so it, it is absolutely Tom Baker. But I have to say, of the new ones, I really love what Edgerton did. I thought he did a dark, traveling by himself doctor to bring the series back, and I don't think he gets nearly enough credit really for reviving all of it. And then everyone jumped in with the new guy and, and their girlfriends went, yeah, he's cute. Like, but what I'm really, I am terribly, incredibly impressed with Matt Smith. From the first episode, I loved him more than Tennant because he's Troughton and Pertwee combined in this bubbly, manic, 
serious, mad scientist, crazy guy. There's a little bit of Keith Richards in there, too, though. That's almost yeah, like Captain Jack, Jack sort of yeah. bravado's he has got like, He is the bubbly energy, and then those moments where you look at him and he's just incredibly old. The fact that he's got these old eyes that look where everyone's like, no, no, you still can, and he's like, no, I know better. It's it's haunting. I just I, I, I do love Matt Smith's work, and I don't want him to go anytime soon. Should we pull the audience? So, the yeah, that's, that's what I was going to do. Though, I might have bad news for you. I know, don't say it. That's what makes William Hartnell the greatest damn doctor ever. He went around 900 years and these schlubs can't go seven. <laughs> <laughs> so out there, um, does anybody out there have a, a favorite doctor? Who, who, who's their doctor? Come on. Yeah. Matt Smith's my doctor. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Woo. Now it started out being Tenet, my doctor, but Matt Smith has that childlike, um, childlikeness you talked about he has that energy, he gets you into the show. The minute he shows up, it's like, bam, I'm Matt Smith, I'm the doctor now. The end of the episode he showed up in, I'm the doctor, look me up. <laughs> and then you're putty in his arms from then yeah. on. I'll say that, like a lot of doctors, especially like <laughs> with tenants, like tenants first episode, that I didn't, like he didn't click with me and it took an episode or two. Or Eccleston, I mean, you pretty much decided to accept he was the doctor. Um, but Smith, by the end of that first episode, I mean, he was the doctor. I mean, hands down. Mm -hmm. Like when, when he started questioning the atroxies and when he walked through all like all the when, when he walked through yeah. the like, <laughs> do you know who I am? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All the rest of the team, I'm the doctor the now, Ron. He was the doctor from that good. moment on. There was no doubt in my mind. I actually what? really like uh, Tennant's introduction. Uh, I didn't like Eccleston's. Eccleston's felt too much like an episode picked at random from the middle of the season. Oh my god. So sorry, so sorry. Well, that's but, I completely agree. But Matt, the, Smith, yeah, Matt Smith's introduction, I think, is about the most perfect introduction you could ask for somebody replacing an earlier actor in a role. Not just Doctor Who, but maybe ever. Well, yeah, it's a weird thing about having the regeneration between McGann and Eccleston, too. I mean, you never didn't well, I mean, see that. The, the, yeah. there was, and they didn't open, up, they didn't did. open up with the regeneration. Yeah, well, almost, but we they didn't open did. up with the regeneration. Yeah. It was just like, uh, here you go. Yeah, because the thing was, is what was originally planned, because um, Davies wanted to sort of give a nod to all the comics that, that had sustained Doctor Who what, during the Dark period, um, they wanted to, he actually offered the comics the regeneration scene, where McGowan would uh, regenerate to Eccleston. Um, but because of legalities, because basically the only way they could have done it is if just killed it out of those you <laughs> Sorry, he's bad. Baby. Um, they, the thing was is they couldn't show Eccleston before the show started, but they couldn't show the regeneration after the show show started. So there was no way of doing it in sync. But Davies did at least offer him, but at BBC sort of nixed it yeah, all. Yeah, because they can't travel back in time or anything. Yeah, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. And it, but I mean that's one regeneration we'll never see. Oh. I mean just for the sheer fact Eccleston said he would never come back. And he apparently had a pretty bad experience with himself. I'll take some footage from Three Musketeers and something from like you know Gone in sixty seconds or dark like twenty eight right. days later and I'll make one. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So anybody else out there have yeah, a favorite doctor? Really, like, come on, where's the Colin yes, Baker fans? Actually, <laughs> my favorite is the fourth doctor. Um, my friends got me started with Doctor Who like five years ago and they started me with all of the fourth doctor. And you were mentioning like the first episode of the Doctors, and I've watched pretty much all of it, and I have to say the fourth Doctor's first episode is probably my favorite. Oh, how it's disoriented and delightful he is to that one. Mm -hmm. uh, Robot. That was a, that's a great, I mean, just, a, you know, when he's trying on all different clothes and stuff like that. I mean, he really owned that role coming out of the gate. And it's so sensitive. You two are scared. What does he want? Sex robot, sex robot. Yes, guys? Hey, hey, no, no, we're hair picturing hair doing hair. this with Cybermen. Yes, sex robots. Hey. Yes, your favorite doctor. I still like Peter Cushing. Oh, there you go. Human being who still manages to invent a TARDIS on his own. Do, um, so how so did he regenerate before blowing up on the Death Star? <laughs> 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 that's that's uh, that's a a That was brilliant. To, uh, you clap for this man. That yes. was brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. He was a partner after that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was after he was fighting the vampire. Exactly. He was turning the fruit leaves off. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you. John Pertwee. Um, he was a good doctor. He was a good doctor, and also the local CBS affiliate in DC used to show 
right after school. Nice. For like two months, and then they replaced it with a game show right away. Uh, <laughs> which game show? reminds me of the game show. Oh, Joker's Wild. Yeah. Dalek, 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 Yeah, with, with, with first we, we got Sarah Jane originally. Right. Um, and that was right. a great episode where uh, Sarah thought the doctor was a dumb. <laughs> I miss Sarah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, I miss Sarah too. Plus, I like the Neo Ed Warning outfit. Yeah, yeah I, I just I just finished watching uh, Invasion of the Bastards. Yeah, Invasion of the Bastards. I love that John Pertwee yeah, actually looks like he could now be a Prince impersonator. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's awesome. <laughs> I want to recut with Doves Cry with, with John Burton. <laughs> I really do. Either that or Dave Chappelle's going to blame me. Steven Seagal would be Jimmy Hendrix's final. <laughs> 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 Jimmy Hendrix's final. Really? What? What the fuck? Really? Yeah. John Burton was playing Hendrix? What? No, Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal was playing Hendrix? Yes. Yeah. 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 What? Uh, the Road Warriors should shut up. <laughs> Okay. Wait, wait, hold on. Do we catch out right? Steven Seagal is playing Jimi <laughs> Hendrix in a movie. Yes. In the past, yes. Why? Jimmy's past. What the hell is in this thing? I don't, dude, so, I'm telling you, it's good. It's so, so, okay, people on the camera. Fan. I think someone should keep an eye on this man at all times this weekend. <laughs> okay, so um, we just hit, we just hit the February 20th, and we know what else, what's, what special happened on the 20th. Yeah, we do. Yes, we do. Rex Manning did? No. Oh. No, that's tomorrow. Yes. No, the 20th was they started filming the new season. Yeah. Oh, that's right. right. They started filming the new season. That's oh. actually a national holiday in Denver. No. It is. The first day of filming Dr. Who. Rex Manning Day is a national holiday. No, the first day of filming Dr. Who is a national holiday. Yes, whenever Rex Manning pops out of the TARDIS and sees the shadow. Oh, oh, that's right. Every day is Rex Manning Day. Oh, Rex, you're so sexy. So, yes. what do we want to see out of this season? Rampant Who. Rex Manning. I'd like to see an Amy Pond, <laughs> Rose, uh, what the hell, bro? I'd like Donna, to see Amy Pond slap. Uh, what? Just a giant no, companion no, no, jello wrestling no, no. match in the TARDIS. Well, if we go back to chunkier uh, rows, because this skinny skeletor crypt keeper. Mm, no, yeah. Well, there's the issue. Six, six, six different versions of Amelia Pond dressed up as Princess Leia in the, in the bikini outfit <laughs> of the Trinity Jedi. Well, that's what I want. That's well, all I want. 13 episodes. Well, that was brilliant. You should clap for that, man. There's actually, there's actually a problem with that. Um, no, there's not. Are you and your logic? No. <laughs> Blasphemer! <laughs> um, They're the problem. I don't know why. Why are you asking these things just to crush his dreams? I, exactly. That's what I do. Like, no, um, okay, okay, okay. Okay. there was an interview no. with um with Spider Gilly 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 and she said that however her character's going out, it won't make it really available for uh, cameos or comebacks. That didn't stop Rose. Rose. They can still do it now! That, that did not stop and Rose with Moffat as a writer. Rose was freaking Doctor Who! Rose was the on the Time Lord's show. No, no, other timeline. Unreachable. No. We no. went to it five times. No, Karen, Karen said, this is it. Which means... Because your good friend Karen, right? Yeah. Yes. Over, no, which, which is surprising <laughs> because at one point she did say she wanted to be the longest running companion, which is not going to happen now. And it kind of takes her, I mean, I hope, hopefully not, but out of the 50th. Which would be a shame. Because yeah, I, I think she's one. one Everybody's going to be in the fiftieth. Everybody. Not everybody. It's got to be. Did Karen tell you that? <laughs> no. It's got to be. We just talked about it. Karen's my BFF. Yeah. We talk about boys need ice cream. It's not somebody getting kicked off. The, it's not somebody getting kicked off the show. Yeah. I think it's just no. they come to the decision they need. Well, again, they it's need Karen. To do Karen. Karen's the one that helped develop what what happens to Amy. Well, is she being asked to leave? No, or she wanted to leave. Is she stupid? Yes. <laughs> Maybe she'll do Confessions of a Call Girl too. Ooh. So think about it. The Return of Jafar? Yes. <laughs> Iago needs more songs. <laughs> Which of the parents from Sarah Jane is going to be in this one? I've got a house, baby. <laughs> yeah, but no. Um, she says she um is she wants herself written off, so she can't come back because she doesn't want the same thing to happen to her like what happened with uh. With Rose, Billy Piper, she that doesn't want. Her? She doesn't want to keep coming back for cameo after cameo. Oh. She wants. She wants an end to the character. I want her to hurry up and get to the cons as well. Uh, yes. And she can yes. shag herself into oblivion by shagging herself literally into oblivion. That should be the. Story. There's the first episode. Pilot written for a new show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Hello. Yes, because yeah, I was about to say the Amy Pond hot tub adventure. She didn't want to hear that. <laughs> Amy Pond hot tub time machine? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Copyright on Pond. <laughs> Trademark. So, any of you guys want to see these sides? Amy, I think it's going to be on the way down. What the fuck is this? <laughs> she left it there. Um, I have a secret desire to see a black doctor. Nice. Now it's not I know exactly who I want to do it. Andrew Tallis? No, my God, he would be good. Ice-T. 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 Ice-T, yeah, what's the TARDIS, bitch? I'm the doctor, and I'm going to travel through time. Wait, Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson is Ice-T? No, this is how Ice-T talks. 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 Ice-T